What's surprising is you are one of the youngest individuals to sign the giving pledge, which for those who are not familiar with that, it's giving 50% of your net worth away during the time you're living. Or more. Or more. Right. And in 2011, you and your wife, Karen, were among the list of philanthropies, uh, 50 list of most generous. And, and that's just great. And I think we all read the journal and everyone likes to read about the things, you know, that goes viral. But the truth is, um, you don't get enough credit for giving back. And I want to applaud you for that. I also want to get an understanding of, you know, why did you sign the pledge? And um, tell me about some of your foundation work that you and Karen are doing that's kind of true to your heart. So we can get to know you away from uh, some of the other things we read. Sure. So. Uh my dad uh, was a very successful businessman. He's still he's still active at uh, 74 years old. Um, and what's interesting about philanthropy is it's I don't think it's innate. I think it's learned. And my dad always pushed me on how important it was to be charitable. And so I had the benefit of someone who provided real leadership uh, to me. You know, the obvious points are, uh, you know, I don't need anything else economically. My family's in a great uh, position. Uh, financially, I'm financially independent. I don't have those kind of concerns. So the question is, what to do with the resources, right? You can give them to the next generation, uh, and there, you know, a lot of times it doesn't work out very well, right? I, I benefited by no. My father said to me, "Bill, you'll never inherit anything from me, probably ever, or unless you don't need the money." Uh, and and, uh, and so I, I didn't have to worry uh, about that affecting my incentive structure. And I think the, you know, I, I had grew up, you know, one of my closest friends uh, was expecting to inherit a lot of money. And it affected his ability. To, um, he was very talented, very smart, but he couldn't commit to anything and stick to it because he had too much optionality in a way. And so I think, um, you know, you can you can create a lot of damage by handing, uh, you know, fortune to uh, to the next generation. And there are a lot more needier and more important causes. Uh, so and give us a couple of the things that your foundation's involved with. So I'll give you who I think will get the Nobel Prize. Uh, seven, eight years ago, a guy came to see me named Andrew Yoon, and he, he had just started something called the One Acre Fund. And the One Acre Fund, he, young uh, guy, uh, moved to Kenya, I don't know if he was there just uh, on vacation or otherwise, and uh, met all of these one acre farmers. And these are women that, that support their families, uh, and you know, eight, nine, ten months of the year, they can feed their families based on what they can produce on the one acre that the government has given them. The other several months of the year, uh, they basically, the kids starve, and they starve. And through teaching modern farming techniques, uh, providing better uh, seed technology, better fertilizer, he's able to increase their output by 3x. And they have a surplus. And he provides the seeds and, and the, uh, the fertilizer and the, and the consulting advice in exchange for half of the excess increase in output. And he takes that money and reinvests it in another farmer. We've invested a relatively tiny amount of money with him, and we're his biggest funder, $7 million. By the end of this year, he will have taken something approaching 100, I think over 100,000 of these one-acre farmers from starvation to feeding their families to having an excess where they can send their kids to school. It's incredible. That's incredible. Okay? And uh, you know, uh, uh, one of our members of our advisory board, uh, you know, uh, was this former CFO of McDonald's, Matt Paul, he's helped Andrew in thinking about franchising, how to, how to build this system, and they're in Kenya now, and they're uh, going into Burundi, and uh, it's an incredible model. Um, I just look at a guy like that, wow. and uh, he, you know, my added value here was pushing him, okay, and uh, giving him capital to accelerate what he's doing. He's compounding. If this were a growth, I mean, by the way, he could make that a profitable business uh, if he slowed his rate of growth. But we've we've given him capital to, so he can do it more.